There is a brand new curriculum for grades preschool through second grade from the good and the beautiful and I am so excited for it. If you're new here, I'm Christina and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about this new curriculum, but then also I'm going to take you along with us as we actually do a lesson. It's been a really long time since I've done any kind of like do a lesson with this video or day in the life. So I thought it would be fun and kind of helpful to show you what it's like doing the little hearts and hands science from the good and the beautiful. But first I want to start out just showing it to you in case you haven't seen it yet because it is brand new. This is the fourth in this series of Science for Little Hearts and Hands, Bones and Stones as an introduction to paleontology and earth science. Mm. What do you think it's about? Dinosaurs. Thank you. So take this Look about dinosaurs. And the girl thinks she shows. Dinosaurs. She shows. I love sort of setting things out and surprising them when we're doing new things so that they get excited about learning and they see it as something fun instead of this boring thing that they have to do but don't really want to do. So I like to keep learning playful, especially at these younger ages. My youngest two are four. She's gonna be five very soon and six. And so we do not do a ton of formal academics. There are not a lot of have to's for them. We're working on learning to read in a very gentle approach using the good and the beautiful. And so Science for Little Hearts and Hands is perfect for them because while I have them join in and kind of sit in and listen in on the science units that I do with my older kids, and they do learn from that and pick up things along the way. I love that this is geared specifically for them. What is a paleontologist? Do you guys know what a paleontologist is? Yes. That's What's a paleontologist? So basically, it's a girl that like walks somewhere. It's a girl that works somewhere? Okay, so you're looking at the picture for clues. Where do you think she works and what do you think she does? The bones and rocks and all that. Look at the animal tracks below. Based on the shape, can you guess what stepped in the mud before it dried? So you, you might want to try that. That might help. Do you see it bigger? Yeah. Um, wildcat, bobcat. Okay, so you think hyena, bobcat, or wildcat? A lion cat. Or a lion cat. All right, let Juju have a turn. Uh, 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 ma, 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 bear. Or a bear. Okay, Juju, your turn. You think a bear? Okay, guess what it is. Those are dog prints. When God created the world. So another thing that I really love about Science for Little Hearts and Hands from the Good and the Beautiful is not only that it is designed for the younger ones in mind and it is playful and conversational and story-based, but I also love how it incorporates God's goodness, God as creator, and weaves him into it. As we go in the back, and there's these little things that we can use. They're not stick -off. All right, and see, this shows us how to put it together. Many of the lessons have an audio narration that you can find on the Good and the Beautiful app. And I love how they include something hands-on for the kids to do as they listen. So we're going to be listening to a story, and at different parts of the story, you move this, I think. Mm -hmm. This visual and kinesthetic aspect of being able to look at the pictures and to physically move the audio narration pawns around as we listen to the narration really helps the kids to stay engaged, stay focused, pay attention to what's being said. The little pictures really help to connect with the story. And I think it is just such a great aspect of the Science for Little Hearts and Hands curriculum, as well as the discussion questions and optional activities at the end of each audio narration. Okay, so this time we're learning about fossils. Is this shoe? No. Is this shoe? No, let me do it. You're each gonna be able to pick one. So who wants to do the first one? This shoe looks like that. Yeah, what about the print? What print do you think it made? Mm, I don't think so. That doesn't look like the bottom of that shoe. Look at the bottom sole of it. What does it have on the bottom sole of it? Yeah, it's probably that one. So as you can see, we moved on to lesson two right away because they just wanted to keep going. And lesson two actually has a reading from the big book of science stories, which is another one of the main aspects of this course. 
Some lessons have the audio narration and some of them have a reading from the Big Book of Science Stories, which is basically a bunch of little books about the science topic that is in story form, which is so helpful for children of this age to connect with what they're learning. Other days when there is not a reading from the Big Book of Science Stories or an audio narration, the children will engage in an activity that they follow along from the parent guide. The combination of the consistency and variation is a great balance. She jumped from the table, ready to head back to the water. As she landed, one of her feet bumped into something poking out of the sand. Trina brushed the sand away from, with her fingers. Grandpa, she called. Tabby, Veda, come look at this. Well, I never, Grandpa's voice trailed off. What, the girls asked together. That looks like a fossil, he exclaimed. Wait, a real fossil? Trina asked, amazed. I have a friend who is a paleontologist and he happens to live nearby, Grandpa said. Let's leave the fossil right here and call him. 20 minutes later, Grandpa's friend, Mr. Dom, arrived at the beach. Look at this, Grandpa said, pointing as they knelt in the sand. Is this a fossil? Whoa, it most definitely is, Mr. Dom replied. He pulled out a little book and began scribbling some notes. Is it a dinosaur fossil? Trina asked excitedly. It looks like a big tooth. How old is it? Can we keep it? Veda and Tabby said all at once. Their sudden questions made Mr. Dom laugh. You are a curious bunch, he exclaimed, smiling. I like curiosity. It's definitely very old. Do you see how this tooth is flat? Mr. Dom continued. Mr. Dom grabbed a handful of rocks and dropped them in the sand right next to the lapping waves. Let's pretend these rocks are the bones inside an animal that has just died. In order for bones to become fossils, the animal's body needs to quickly decompose or be broken down so that only the bones are left. Then the bones need to be covered up very soon after. Usually water will spread dirt, rocks, or even sand over the bones. Trina reached her hand out to touch the fossil again. It really was hard. As the years passed, Mr. Dom explained, strong forces such as wind and water eventually break down layers of rock and soil and those same forces carry the layers away. That, that can't be. This leaves the buried fossils closer to the surface of the ground and people can more easily find them, hands out of your mouth, Juge, by digging or even noticing them sticking out of the ground as you did. Mr. Dom continued, this is just one way fossils can form. Sometimes as layers of the earth build up, an imprint of a bone or shell is left a few weeks later, Trina, Tabby, and Veda sat on Grandpa's back porch, sipping lemonade. Grandpa's footsteps sounded on the back door. Girls, he said, grabbing their attention, I have a surprise for you. What is it? Trina asked, jumping up. What are we doing? Veda and Tabby inquired at the same time. Grab your shoes and get in the Jeep. We've got somewhere to go, Grandpa instructed. The girls squealed and ran to the Jeep. Fifteen minutes later, Grandpa pulled the Jeep into the parking lot of the local museum. This way, Grandpa directed them leading them into the building and down a long hallway. They soon entered a room with a large mammoth statue. Paintings of ancient animals covered the walls. Also on display in the center of the room was a large skeleton of what looked like some kind of horse. Mr. Dom was waiting in the room and he waved in motion for them to come over to the display. Thanks for coming, he told the group. I wanted to show you this, Trina told him. Thank you, he replied. Ooh, fun facts about fossils. If you ever find what might be a fossil, leave it there. Record the exact location and report it to a local organization that deals with fossils. They will let you know whether or not you can keep it. The process by which a bone or other material becomes a fossil is called fossilization. So what did you guys learn today about fossils? I hope you enjoyed doing a lesson with us from the new Science for Little Hearts and Hands, Bones and Stones course from The Good and the Beautiful. If you have questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments and I will try to answer them. You can also follow us over on Instagram at rooted underscore home life. And this brand new course is linked down in the description box below so you can go check it out for yourself as well as the other Science for Little Hearts and Hands courses. The Good and the Beautiful is also where we get our language arts and math curriculum, our favorite books for all of my kids from preschool through high school. So check other things out when you're over there as well and see if there might be some resources that would be a good fit for your family. If you're new here, introduce yourself down in the comments below and I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Until next time, stay rooted.